Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Teresa Marentet, CEO and Chief Nursing Officer of the Windsor Essex County Health Unit. Dr. Ahmed will be joining us today as well. Today we are reporting an, in an increase of 21 new cases of COVID-19 in Windsor and Essex County. Of the 21 cases, six are close contacts of confirmed cases, six are community acquired, two are outbreak related, and seven are still being investigated. We have had 13,667 cases since the beginning of the pandemic. 13,037 cases are now resolved and 229 people are active at this time. There are 51 preliminary or confirmed variants identified in Windsor and Essex County and two cases have the UK variant. 13 cases are currently in the hospital and five people are in ICU. Our community has lost 401 people to COVID-19. There are currently 11 active outbreaks in Windsor and Essex County, five workplace outbreaks, five community outbreaks, and one school outbreak. For now for our vaccine update, a total of 73,978 doses have been administered to Windsor Essex County residents. People born in 1946 or earlier are eligible to receive a vaccine through one of our targeted vaccination clinics. Please visit our website at wechu.org to book your appointment. You will be able to choose your preferred site and appointment time based on availability. We are booking approximately 1,900 people a day with an overall of 5,500 people using our online booking system to book available appointments from Thursday today till, through till Saturday. Currently, we are only booking about three to four days out to ensure vaccine supply and proper scheduling. If the bookings are full when you go to register, please check back as new dates and times are being added daily. If you do not have a computer or need assistance with booking, you can call the booking number 226-773-2200. With support from the City of Windsor and Windsor Regional Hospital, booking agents will answer your call and assist you. The call center assisted more than 700 people with their booking so far. Residents 60 years and older are also able to um, book for a COVID vaccine at uh, selected local uh, pharmacies. We have added contact information for the 57 participa participating pharmacies on our website at wechu.org. Alternatively, people can book an appointment at ontario.ca forward slash pharmacy COVID vaccine. Please note that all bookings are for first appointments, first doses only. Earlier in the month, Ontario announced that second doses would be delayed for four months based on the recommendation from the National Advisory Committee on Immunization or NACI. This change in direction was to ensure that vaccination supply could be maximized uh, and the entire adult popu uh, population vaccinated with their first dose as quickly as possible. If you were given a date to receive your second dose at a mass clinic, the appointment is canceled. Our team will be contacting any resident that had been booked to cancel their appointment for the second dose. <clears throat> Many people have already been notified, but we are aware that some people have not been contacted. So we are working on this. If you have not received a cancellation yet, please note that a sec second doses are suspended. For general inquiries regarding vaccination, please call 211. I will now turn it over to Dr. Ahmed, our Medical Officer of Health. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I'll start off by saying a uh, great thanks to Teresa and our amazing leadership to allow me to take some time off to take care of myself. Dr. Alexa Kateri, the Associate Medical Officer of Health, providing the physician coverage to our health unit. And uh, above all, the outstanding leadership team who continue to work behind the scenes to keep our community safe. There was no moment of concern for me to see the health unit in safe hand while I was away. The level of support, the letters, the cards, the personal outreach from people I know and people who I don't even know, was truly a humbling experience and I don't have the right words to truly show my respect and gratitude to each and every one of you who took the time to reach out to me and my team. 
This pandemic has taught many lessons to us. One of the most important lessons for me is kindness. We, we have to be kind to each other. We don't know what the other person is experiencing or going through. We can only see what is right in front of us and could never understand what is going on behind the scene. The only way to show our respect is by being kind to each other. I'm truly honored and blessed to see the kindness of many, and I hope that we spread the kindness everywhere in our community and rise above all the pandemic challenges. Thank you. We'll now take questions from the media. Today, we'll start with CBC. Hi, good morning, Teresa, and uh, good morning and welcome back, Dr. Ahmed. My question is about variants of concern. Uh, Winter Essex is seeing some variants, but the number we've seen is low relative to other health units, particularly in other COVID hotspots. I'm wondering if you have any ideas about why that is. Well, great question, and uh, I, I think uh, it truly depends on the level of interaction and the level of uh, measures that we are taking uh, locally, as well as our residents who continue to follow the public health measures. And even as we are looking that uh, the cases are on the rise in many of the regions in Ontario, and uh, we are lucky and blessed to have uh, a relatively uh, lower case rates out so far in our region. So I think. It's a combination of uh, both uh, the, 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 the containment of the disease that's happening as well as the, the measure that everyone is taking. So we hope that uh, we can keep it that way, but we definitely need support from everyone. And uh, we, we definitely don't wanna see what we have seen in the past. If everyone is following these measures, we can we can keep it under control and we can we can get through it. And uh, I think uh, with the increased rollout in the vaccine, we are truly hoping that we will get past this uh, this hurdle and uh, we'll be in a much better position. So I think our community is doing a great job, and we just need to keep doing it. Um, we're also bucking the trend on hospitalizations. Um, of rising elsewhere in the province and, and going down here, we have about 15% of our population vaccinated. Do you think that plays a role? Well, definitely. I think uh, one of our key driver of our hospitalization had uh, been the long-term care home and retirement home. And uh, with them, uh, more than 90% of the residents vaccinated. I think this is definitely uh, keeping our health system uh, in general um, in, a, in a much better shape than where we were in the November, December and January timeline. And uh, the more people in the community vaccinated, especially the high risk vulnerable population, we will be in a much better position. Thank you. Any questions from Blackburn? Yes, good morning and uh, welcome back, Dr. Ahmed. Um, I'm just curious, speaking of the hospitalizations, I know when um, the province is looking at the different indicators for moving to stages, hospitalizations uh, is one of those indicators. Do you know, I mean, I know our case rates still seem to be high, but with our lower hospitalization, is that being taken into consideration um, when considering if you know we are ready to move, say, to an orange level or, or something like that? Yeah, no, I think all those measures are definitely taken into consideration and um, it's it 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 all matters on what the what the actual case counts are and what the actual risk is and how many cases are currently being active. And uh, while the other health system indicators are important, but I think the the critical pieces, uh, it, it always has been the the actual case count. Uh, when we get to that level of uh, being consistently in a in a range, let's say that justifies for us to be in orange, I think that would be the good timeline to to measure where we are and uh, take consideration into all of the other indicators that that could come into play. And on top of that, obviously, uh, there are other uh, risks that we are currently uh, tracking. One is obviously the variant of concern, as we talked about, because we don't we we know that it can quickly change everything. And uh, because of the uh, the uh, higher transmission risk associated with the variant of concern, it can change very quickly. Secondly, we know that uh, there's been uh, some uh, changes in the in the uh, legislation in terms of uh, the um, um, 
the, the, the restaurants and businesses to open up with expanded capacity. So I think there are things that are already in play. We should be looking at everything and the impact of how it will affect our community before we talk about further um, uh, loosening of the restrictions. So at this point, you wouldn't expect any changes tomorrow? I don't think so because I I wasn't uh, uh, approached by the province at the, this week and um, I'm sure Teresa was also not approached uh, by this week so we are not anticipating any any changes tomorrow. Thank you. Any questions from the Windsor Star? I do not have any questions but thank you. Okay. Any questions from Amy 800? Good morning, Dr. Ahmed. Welcome back. Uh, not sure if you want to get into this, but just watching the YouTube feed, it seems like uh, you're refreshed. Uh, I guess just the past two weeks, very important for you just to step step back and take take a little break. Well, it was uh, important for me to uh, to do that, and uh, as I said. Uh, uh, it was. Uh, it only happened uh, because of Teresa <laughs> that she was willing to uh, step up and uh, you know give me that uh, um, uh, that time. It was important for me, and uh, I was able to take care of myself. And uh, now I'm back, and uh, hopefully we'll continue the the battle against COVID and keep our community safe. I know you mentioned this before, but the past twelve months obviously it's taken a toll on yourself and others. I guess not breaking point, I don't want to use that term, but was there a time where you you thought to yourself, I can't keep this going on a regular basis, I need to step back a bit? Well, I, I think uh, that was the point and um, it um, it is it is hard and everyone who is uh, who has been at the front line dealing with all of this thing and uh, it is it has been it it, it is never easy. And, um, you know, as I met care workers, everyone has been doing an amazing job in keeping our, our community safe. We come out every day, every morning, just to, with, with the passion to do the work which is right and which uh, would be beneficial for the community. And um, we have been working um, nonstop with all the pressures and everything. And I know I was able to, um, to at least get away from here uh, for, for, for a bit. But uh, I know Teresa has been working nonstop uh, and I think uh, she she has been uh, the strongest, I guess, among us that, uh, uh, that she is still here every day. But uh, it, it is tough, it is tough. And uh, I think uh, we need to recognize that and we need to acknowledge that. And it is important that we all take care of ourselves when we need to. Thank you. Any questions from CTV? Yes, good morning and welcome back, Dr. Ahmed. Um, every week when the region remains in red, frustration seems to mount with some residents and businesses. What can you tell them at this point um, to hang on and, and what else can be done? Well, as I said, it's 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 really tough, and not every situation is the same situation. And uh, what we are dealing is, is still we are in the pandemic. I think that's the only thing that I can t I can tell. It fluctuates. The case rates go up and down. The the restrictions, the requirement, it goes up and down. It's frustrating. I get it. Like you know, it's 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 never been easy. It's not easy for one versus the other. Some may have a more a better way to cope with the challenges that they're dealing with. Some businesses may get a little bit more, uh, I guess, uh, are able to function despite some of these restrictions. Some businesses are, aren't. So it's it's a tough time. And uh, the only way we can get through is once the pandemic is over. What we can what we can think is the, is the issues or the concern to blame with is the virus, is the pandemic. It's not me, it's not the province, it's not the, the restrictions that we have. We are in the pandemic, and as soon as we get rid of this pandemic, get over this pandemic, we can be in a better position. We have seen the up and down, and I think it's just a matter of time that when we when we have a significant number of people vaccinated in our community, we are already seeing the impact. When we talked about it, the long-term care home, retirement home, and also our community residents as they're getting more and more vaccinated, we will get through it. I think it's just a matter of making sure that we get a critical mass vaccinated, to to break the chain of transmission and when we have enough people vaccinated 
all of these case rates will start to go down and with more loosening of the restrictions there will be much more opportunity for everyone to get back to some kind of normalcy in their life and that's what we are all struggling for we have you know and, and i don't want to belabor the point but everyone in the health system is working with the same goal to get through this pandemic as quickly as possible there is no there is nothing more that is important for us rather than get through the pandemic and move everyone in a safe zone without having to worry about COVID. And how long do you think it would take to reach herd immunity as the more people become vaccinated and more people have had it? Well, the the herd immunity, uh, I think it would be difficult to predict, predict at this time, like what proportion of uh, uh, um, uh, people that we need to vaccinate. There are some results that we are starting to see from other parts of the world where they have more people vaccinated. For example, if we're looking at Israel, who has done uh, close to 60% or more people vaccinated in their community, and uh, they're starting to see the impact. Their case rates are going down significantly. So so I would say anticipate that at least 60% of our community needs to be vaccinated before we get to a better spot. And again, the more and more people vaccinated, we will eventually will, will, will not have to talk about COVID. And I think that would be the best day that we can think of at this time that we don't have to talk about COVID. We, we can talk about anything else but COVID. Um, so I, I, my, goal, my hope is at least 60%, uh, then we will be in a much, much better position. But ideally, you know, as many people vaccinated, 80%, 90%, as we have for some of the other uh, deadly diseases, such as measles uh, um, and uh, others that we have seen in the past. But uh, at least 60 to 70% would be my, my, my guess that, uh, would, that we need in our community to reach the herd immunity effect. And are cross-border workers still a concern, considering most of them have, have been fully vaccinated now? Well, I think uh, we'll have to still wait and see what the data tell us. Right now, uh, we know that the U.S. is uh, loosening some of those restrictions when uh, everyone has received their two doses. We haven't seen the same um, um, policy direction uh, in Canada. Um, so until that changes, I think we'll still have to wait and see how it will impact us. But uh, something that we need to be mindful of, if people are fully vaccinated, I think the, the risk for them spreading would go down. But uh, again, this is all something that we have to wait uh, from a policy direction from the, from the government. Okay, thank you. Any additional questions from CBC? Uh, yes, I'm just seeing an email here that the health unit has rescinded its order that was shutting down um, the missions facilities. Uh, what can you tell us about that? I cannot. Uh, because I just started and I'm looking at Teresa and she doesn't have any update as well. Maybe we can follow up later today uh, once we have more information. I'll have to get in touch with my team to see what's going on. Okay, thank you. Any additional questions from Blackburn? No, thank you. Any additional questions from the Windsor Star? No, I'm good, thank you. Any additional questions from okay. AMA 100? No, thank you. Okay. Any additional questions from CTV? No, thank you. Have a great day. You too. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.